Okay, so this is part two of the Sabbath dinner. Um, if you missed part one, it'll be linked in the description below. Uh, if you did watch it, then let's just jump back into it. This guy does not look very happy. He just staring, staring Peter down. <laughs> awkward because uh Shlomi said keep the camera down and we could see some people i don't think they knew mm. i was coming in so they you know i don't want to disrupt that but you could get enough of a idea of what's going on i wanted to do this right get the uh proper attire how do you guys like this so far pretty interesting there we go it's been a while since i've done this so what does he mean by the proper attire is this the whole uh what is it wool and linen thing you can't mix the two they have to be either is it all wool or all linen or you only do one or the other okay they can't turn the light on i turned the light off when i left the bathroom and they're not allowed to touch any of the lights. So I have to, I have to turn it back on. Quite interesting. There we go. So Peter has the power to do so because he's not Jewish. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So let me say before, this is, this song says, it's about welcoming the angels. This song is about praising their wives, about recognizing they have one woman, one woman, one woman for life, and their their dedication to that woman, something like that. Oh wow, even the father he he puts a barrier between his, his hands and his daughter's hair. Gotcha. <laughs> so the bread is the challah and this is the challah cover blanket. The blood is, bread is very sacred in Hasidic or Jewish culture. So I guess we're going to bless the wine and then get into the bread. And so they tell this all to me when the camera's down. Uh, we're doing all of what the rabbis told us to do. I can talk here, but they can't talk to us. So I'll try my best to get it right. Wow. Shlomi can, can pray pretty quickly. Or maybe that's normal. Maybe that's a normal skill. Um, It's very interesting, like, that this is... um literally done every every week like i i i know this this is probably not crazy for you guys or like mind-blowing for you guys but again like this seems like something that we would only do for like big holiday or events like christmas or easter or thanksgiving stuff like that and this is like a it's like a thanksgiving dinner every week so I was told we're coming up on the best moment here. So they, they wash their hands, and until they eat the bread, they cannot talk. So Shlomo was saying there's a lot of nonverbal cues going on. I was wondering what that sink was in that corner I saw in the first part. They had like a separate little sink in that corner there. Mm -hmm. 
I guess kids can talk that. Yeah, right, right, right over there. This, uh, this sink here, yeah. Coming, whistling. Now, does each one of the men have to bless the loaves of bread as well? Also, is there a certain number of loaves that need to be made or presented? Or did they just happen to make this many because they kind of figured how many people they were going to have? My birthday's in two days. Oh, I took the Starting with the bread here, nice warm bread. So this is Moroccan salmon, and I was wondering what that could be because I've never heard of Moroccan salmon. But it's it's the preparation, it's the spices, I believe. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We have a, a fish, and uh, I don't know what that sauce, but it looks it looks tasty. Hummus, different sauces, I'm gonna taste here, all homemade. Looks like a lot of time went into this. Yeah, man, I gotta go to one of these dinners. <laughs> this looks really, really good. And this is, doesn't even seem like maybe it's the main course, you know? This is just kind of like the appetizers. Very nice. Onions. I see some peppers over here. <laughs> so the Torah says at every meal you have to have wine, fish, meat, and challah bread. But you can freestyle a little bit. See, we got some pesto. So wine, fish, challah, and what was the other one he said? So the Torah says at every meal you have to have wine, fish, meat, and challah. Oh, meat, okay. And this happens on a Friday to a Saturday, right? Because growing up, we always used to say, um, I believe it was Fridays, Friday dinner was never meat, always fish. Um, now, we didn't always follow that, but, you know, I, I used to get yelled at sometimes when on a Friday I would have meat instead of fish. Bread. But you can freestyle a little bit. See, we got some pesto, baba ganoush. That's obviously Jewish, but pesto is in uh, mushrooms, different types of fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, again, we can do so it. we just had a conversation about the family unit, and it's a it's a puzzle. So, a husband and the wife from the Torah have defined roles. The husband's supposed to provide uh, monetarily, keep the house going, roof over everyone's head, and the woman is the provider for the children. The caretaker keeps home of the takes care of the home life. I don't think this is any surprise. Um, but they were saying there's equal. I I I kind of see that as like a traditional, um, you know, archetype architect of the of the family unit. Um, now these days it can seem a little bit tough to do that because having a a one income family, especially here in like Toronto, is is quite difficult to survive. Um, both people, both parents usually need to be working, depending, I guess, on what kind of job you have and like how much income you're making. But, um, yeah, I don't know how that would work, uh, for my wife and I simply because of inflation and the price of everything. Like, we both kind of need to be working. Um, but I do, I do like that value system of like, or I guess I always had that kind of mentality, like 
men kind of provide the women take care of the kids and the house and this and that obviously that's changed and i'm i'm not like um you know dead set on that but uh i i do understand the value of that quality in it whereas you know he makes the majority of the money she also makes money and works she does a majority of the raising of the children okay he also jumps in and is a very hands-on father he even changes diapers that's awesome cold. but they're very much into uh, their traditional roles and by doing so they say there's no confusion there's no uh you know no arguing over what should be done it's very clear what needs to be done and there's equality in the relationship but just different roles in the relationship see that's also interesting because i know a lot of people who get a little bit resentful because they say like well i'm always doing all the chores i'm the one who's always taking care of the kids yes you help out but you know you do whatever you change a diaper here and there i'm with them all the time and vice versa he's like well you know i make all the money and you spend it all like I, I can see like there's sometimes quite a bit of resent uh resentfulness towards each other, but um if they can make it work, that's awesome. Shlomi was just revealing uh that he loves Shabbos for the fact that he has to put his phone away. He's a little bit addicted to his phone, like most of us. And in Shabbos, well, he can't look. And he also quit smoking the very minute before Shabbos, I think many years ago. So another thing that was just mentioned at the table was some co-workers around some of these guys here are always like ah, i wish i was jewish why why would, why would you want to be jewish because you have chavez you can put it all away and it doesn't feel like a burden to me it doesn't feel like uh someone's missing out from anything it feels more like they're gaining there's connectivity Oh, 100 percent yeah there's so much value in this just getting to like i said hard reset take the time to connect with your loved ones and and all that 100 percent activity no silly distractions and it's like a, a very firm rule so there's no there's no going over the line it's very clear and this is the main Why, Why not? Because there's no school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like half a week I'm in China, but I come home for Shabbos and then but Matzah what? Shabbos, like Saturday night, I'm on the, the flight. But we uh -huh. have a deal that we try to make as a Shabbos. Right. We're home as a unit. We're home. We try to do that. Yeah. So he he spends half of the week in China, so that's where he works. And so what what is the the typical cutoff? For Chavez, it's like sundown to sundown, like Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's the time frame. Because before, when I was dating my wife, I told her, that she asked me, like, what's your most important thing that you think no, that yes, I... No, yes, that's a non-negotiable. Oh, she asked me, what's non-negotiable? That's, that's, that's you something... Said, what does that mean? And, <laughs> yeah, she, and no. I told her, that's Oman. She's like, what do you mean? I said, every Rosh Hashanah, I will be in Oman, no matter what. And she said, I'm in. That's it. Cool. So I have a lot of friends that their wife gives them a very hard time. They end up going, but they get there already all bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one coming, showing up over the happy. And they're like, your wife let you go? Yep. I'm like, oh, she packed me up. She even put some notes mm -hmm. in my mouth. Yeah. When we're a unit and we stick together, and that goes for anything in business, when you stick with your partner, when you're, um, when you stick with a friend, when anyone goes through a hard time and you stick together, then that's how you come out on top apologize if i'm not reacting to too much to this one in particular but i'm just kind of like absorbing everything and everything that they're saying and everyone's like kind of different uh you know have li little different stories but they all kind of come back to the same thing and it's 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 nice to hear them all so in our culture like in yiddishkeit that's how it works we stick together we support each other, we're there for each other, and that's how we survive. We dress yeah. similar, we act similar, we abide by certain yeah, rules. Yeah. Yes. When you're there, there's, you're there's you know, variances within what we do, but at the end of the day, um, it boils down to the same, you know, concept of tribalism, and that's how we survive. Yeah, that's listen. how we survive till now, and that's how we're always survive. So when the outside world looks at us, they look at it as like a bad thing, we're secluded. 
But really, if only they would look at us like we're just trying to survive. No, we, I grew up with four grandparents. All four of them were Holocaust survivors. Yeah, and that's that seems like a very common theme in terms of, I think Yoni also said that, that a lot of these, or no, Shlomi said it in the beginning, that a lot of the community uh, come from Holocaust survivors. And uh, that's um, that's something definitely that I guess you, you reflect on and you, you have always kind of in the back of your mind, like, uh, where your family came from or what they had to go through three of them went through Auschwitz and it's not it's something that we learned from, from them that the only way you're going to survive if you have each other back right well, whenever we had any kind of conversation the holocaust came up especially if my grandparents were at our house did your grandparents spoke about it yeah they spoke about it some of them spoke more about about it some less my family no one ever said a word it was like so it was just something you didn't talk about my grandmother because it was too painful and yeah, my grandmother sure. spoke about it every day all day our community <laughs> She says that in like a kind of like a annoy annoyed sense, like yeah, she talked about it every day. She she let us know, you know, which is kind of funny. Community gets, you know, put down. We talk about this all the time. It gets put down because of the lack of education, quote unquote education. But really, does it really matter if you went to college? Thank you. Um, the fact is that. You know, Ellie doesn't even didn't even speak English until he was 19 years old. Yet he runs a successful business. He sells millions of dollars a month in 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 business. There are different kinds of education, and not all education needs to boil down to, you know, college. So this is another thing that I've been reading in some of the comments. People were saying like, um, you know, there's news articles or the, whatever the media bashes the Jewish people for their education. It, what? is so different from the educational system is it that the educational system isn't you know you learn science math uh history whatever whatever it's more like um reading the torah learning the talmud all that kind of stuff uh i hope i use those correctly <laughs> um and you know uh the value systems and stuff like that and more like maybe homeschooling although i think there is there's actually schools because a lot of you have said boys and girls are sec separate when they go to schools so there are schools that are attended is the curriculum just different there's uh, street education and there's um, education you can receive from from the yeshiva world that really can provide a life and that's what he's done i never went to college yet i became a commercial real estate broker and now i brought, i do a lot of sales for him and the social media um so i think it's it's important we talk about a lot like how the world perceives us that we don't have this education the fact is that education doesn't mean going to college now is there anything against going to college to get an education um like if you were in school, the Jewish school, whatnot, and you did that educational course, but then also then wanted to go take like a college course or learn something else, uh, that wouldn't be frowned upon or anything, would it? There's some people academic and great college works them, but not everyone is academic. Second cup brisket, your baby squash, seasonal baby balsamic carrots, string beans with duck fry. Enjoy. I think that's it. Did I say anything? Would you like some red carrots? I love those for you. All right. Real food. Peter's in, Peter's loving that. He's enjoying that meal. What do you got there? What do you got there? Is that your friend?
So is this this part also typical, like um, this prayer or this song that is being sung? Because I assume this is not the one that has said after a meal, because it looks like they're still eating, correct? So it's just it's just like um, in between type of thing. It must be just like an entertainment thing. That's cool. I like that. It's like their form of karaoke. Hello, Danny. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I have a visitor today. Little Danny boy. He just woke up from a nap, I think. I guess because they're not allowed to like do anything typically uh, in a sense they have a maid that will clean the dishes and whatnot um during the after the meal and all that stuff all right see you later danny <laughs> that's myrna the housekeeper she's really into the music good job is everybody good job is myrna good job is myrna <laughs> So the candles, the candles have to burn out completely. They're not allowed to, to blow out the flame. Unless you're not Jewish, then you can blow out the flame. Oh no, look what's happening in here. You got the Febreze? You want to make it smell better? Get a better scent? Oh my God, lay off that. Lay, not so much. So right now we're closing down the meal. They're gonna thank God for now. Thank God for the future. That they never starve. They never are reliant upon other people. Lomi's really getting into it now, eh? He's feeling, he's feeling the, I don't know what you would call it, the spirit, the, the faith. Yes, Danny, I'll, I'll see you later, buddy. What an adventure, and that was a first for me, I think a first for a lot of you, Shabbat yeah. dinner. And I want to leave on a few final observations about the evening. It was much less serious than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be uh, way more stiff, less laughing. Yes, I will agree. I kind of am a little bit surprised at that too. I thought it would be a little bit more... Um, you know, everybody's like quiet to themselves, praying, that kind of thing. More formal. And while there were rituals and there, there was obviously the singing going on, it was a very light, jovial, fun experience. Mm -hmm. So that was a surprise. I thought the women would be dressed more conservatively. Uh, they were all wearing wigs. You, you, I, I couldn't tell it like I, I knew that they all wear wigs, but I didn't mm. it hit me at the end uh, I really like these people they've I've <laughs> uh, Peter Peter sounds like he just broke up with 
with his ex girlfriend. He's just like, I I really like their family, you know. Like, don't worry, Peter. They like you too, man. I like you. Everywhere I go in the Hasidic community, they've they've really taken me in, and I don't feel. You know, usually when you're in very, not every, but in times I've felt when I'm in a, in a very seriously, you know, serious religious group, you know, looked at as inferior, and I haven't felt that at all mm. with the Hasidic Jews. Maybe I got lucky, just the people I've been around, but overall I can speak from my experience. and Just a lot of love, a lot of warmth, a lot of open arms. So I want to thank Sturdy and Ely for opening their doors to their home to let me in, to let all of us in. That's a bold, brave, honorable thing to do that does a lot of good for everyone, I believe. It, it bridges between the Hasidic world and the non-Hasidic world and lets people see for sure. perhaps a view they haven't seen before. I'll also link a, uh, leave a link down below for, for my Patreon if you want to support this channel. I got a uh, yeah, like uh, getting to see all of that. And um, at first I thought it was Shlomi's house, but apparently, you no, know, it's it's Eli and, and Sterney's house, which um, they have a beautiful house. Got to thank them for letting us do that, uh, as well as all the rabbis, I guess, letting Peter Peter see this. Um, and they get to see behind closed doors like that. They're just people like you and I, and they're just... Um, celebrating uh each other in a different way than maybe you and i would you know link down there you can go to that and shlomi's link thank you shlomi for setting all this up for a non-hasidic person to get into an environment like that as you might imagine is not such an easy thing to do mm -hmm. i've only gotten in these places because of shlomi check out his youtube channel too he goes all over the middle east as a hasidic jew dressed as he is thanks for coming along on that ride from New York City until the next one. <laughs> I am absolutely exhausted. It's one in the morning. That's awesome. See you then. Yeah, so we'll definitely have to check out Shlomi's page too, like I said in the last video. Oh no, look what's happening in here. You got the Febreze? You want to make it smell better? <laughs> oh my god, lay off it. I ain't got so much. <laughs> Uh, well, definitely dropping a like on this one. Wow, this one almost has 3 million views. Great job, Peter. Great job, everybody who got this together, got it working. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, so you guys let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Um, hit the subscribe button if you guys enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button on Peter's channel. Uh, I've already subscribed just to make sure I can keep up with him. Um, like I said, definitely going to check out Shlomi's page. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.